So this is the page for inputting performance data. First thing to note is that there's some generic help available by clicking at the top help and information on completing performance data and then there's specific help and definitions available for each performance indicator with these blue buttons down the right hand side against each PI. What you see on this page will be determined by uh, which benchmarking club you're in um, and you can also make individual cho choices about which performance indicators are relevant to you, uh, what you want to collect and compare. Other things to note that as you scroll down the list, you'll see at the top the performance indicators have got four columns for inputting data quarterly. Towards the bottom of the list, scrolling down, there's one column only for Q4. So some PIs are defined as quarterly and some are defined as annual. All of the definitions we use match the definitions from Housemark. Um, our quarters are quarterly cumulative, so Q1's April to June, Q2 April to September, Q3 April to December, and Q4, as it says here, April to March, which means that in Q4 you're inputting data for the whole year, um, which effectively means it's up to SPBM members whether they input any data quarterly or annually. And in fact, most SPBM members input data on an annual basis and find that the annual benchmarking reports are sufficient for the purposes of comparing their own performance with others. To begin inputting data, you just click on the field that you're interested in. I'm putting data in for 2014-15, annual data into Q4. Input your figure and either tab to the next field or click on the next field that you're interested in. As you input, the data is validated and checked on the server. And so you'll have seen that the you might have seen that the screen refreshed there and we've now got a little message in green at the top saying that item has been saved to the database. Each performance indicator has got a set of limits which again match the limits set by Housemark. And to see that best I'm going to click on the blue help button for this second PI in the list, which is rent collection. So every PI has a help screen available, which looks like this. It includes the frequency, whether it's quarterly or annual, the polarity, which we use for ranking. Uh, scroll down to the bottom, you can see there's a full definition, gives the rationale and an example, and also details of who else uses the PI. But what I'm specifically interested in here is the these red and yellow boxes which define the validation and acceptance range for this PI. So validation range, that's the red, the limits beyond which if, if you try and put a, a value in outside of those limits, we'll assume that it's uh, a mistake because it's, it's not a possible uh, value. Um, in yellow, the acceptance range, that's a narrower range. And this is really where we would expect most members' figures to lie. The idea of these is that it gives you some help as you're inputting, prevents you putting in values which are not possible, and gives you a yellow warning if you put in a, a value which seems unlikely. So I'm going to go back to the data entry form now and we're going to have a look at how that works. So 
Rent collection is a percentage of rent owed. I'm just going to put in 100. So I've collected 100% of my rent. Tab to the next field in the next row. And I've got a green message at the top saying the item has been saved. Current tenant arrears, 1.2%. Onto the next field. And the green message is still at the top. Now, if I go back to my rent collected and put in a value which is completely outside of the limits, say that I've collected 50% of the rent, for example. Now, when I try and tab out of that field or click on another field, it's turned red and I've got a message at the top. It says, error, couldn't save that item. Please correct these issues and save it again. Now one option I've got is to click on this where it says refresh and I can just take it back to the value that was there before. Alternatively, I've got some additional help here. It says GMPI 28 Q4 value is invalid. That was input at 50. It should be between 65 and 120. Demonstration HA data for last year. So it's telling me what I put in for this value last year, which should give me some steer as to what this year's figure is likely to be. So it's saying that Q1, Q2, and Q3 are all blank. But for Q4, I put in 99.85 last year. So I think, okay, well, it wasn't 50. I'm going to change it back to 100. And now we're okay. And we've gone through and we've saved it. So that's the validation limits, um, which will stop you putting in a, a, a value that's not actually possible. Um, with those acceptance limits that are slightly narrower, that was 95 to 105. So we're saying we expect most people will be collecting rent in that sort of range. So if I go outside of that and say 90% and I get in a tab, now I get a yellow warning, but I also get the green message to say that the item's been saved. And the warning tells me that I've input a value of 90, that that value is within the validation limits, but we would usually expect a different value between 95 and 105. And again, it's giving me the data from last year. It tells me that last year in Q4, I put 99.85 in. So really, it's not stopping me proceeding. It has saved the value, but it's just flashes up a warning telling me to check uh, the amount that I've put in. And the idea of this is really just to provide you with feedback as you go inputting the data to try and prevent uh, wrong values from going in um, and to check that unusual values um, are what you've intended. So that's how data entry works. I'm going to go back to the main menu now. As I've said, there's help available throughout the system. And if you have any questions, please get in touch with us for any information. To log out, you just click on your name, log out takes you back to the main website with a message to say that you've safely logged out. Thanks very much.